Okay, so uh, we'll talk about um, uh, C++ uh, templates. So wh what is that? So we write one code base, like for example, we write one vector class, like we did here, and its functions. And then we are able to work with different types of data like the C++, the C++ standard library vector currently does. The vector we've created so far doesn't give us the option to specify which type of data to use. If we try to do it, it's going to tell us that our vector doesn't support that yet. So this is what we're after. We want to add that functionality. Uh, but before we do that, then we'll, we'll create one short example for a function, a free function. So we will create a free function that um, a free function that's a, a template, meaning uh, what? So we want to create one, one function that uh, adds and then we can work with uh, either integers or doubles or other types of data that that's what we're after so that concept in C++ and in C sharp and Java uh, and even Python is supported I think C sharp and Java call them uh, generics or, or, or generalized classes or functions. And Python, Python uh, calls them type ducking, you know, and C++ calls them template, but it's the same thing. So one code base and then give it functionality to work with different data types. That way we don't have to create a vector for integers, and then a vector for doubles because I mean if you can see like the data type really doesn't matter like we're just going to be saving them to a list so we should be able to make this class support that and then we save lines of code okay so when uh, we add template code say we have this function uh, uh, add and then we templatize it and let's go ahead and write that code and then we'll come back here so remember this is a, a free function so we will say uh, I want to create a template and so this right here compiler we want to create a template function so that's the heads up like anyway you know the next uh, line of code that I write I want you to set it up for for temp uh, for template this T means any data type any data type integer double character and so forth and then we want it to return any data type T and we call our function add and we want to be able to work with any type t we say a any type t we say b and um, only for this case we have to write the code here otherwise we have to write some additional code in the cpp um, okay so um, this T can be anything. I mean, it can be any name. Okay, usually the industry sticks to T. So so that's what we'll use T, but it could be like Y, B, some, whatever. And then we say here, uh, return A plus B. So when we write this code,
then uh, C++ behind the scenes knows that this is a template class. And if we want to use this in main, uh, let me see here, so... We can say um, integer num equals add 5 and 5. And then if we highlight this, notice C++ now knows. Oh, okay. You want to work with integers. So when this is compiled, remember, we have to compile our program into an executable. Then behind the scenes, C++ writes code uh, for int add int a int b. And that's how it'll know that, let me uh, do that. I'm going to remove it from here, okay? But I just want to get the syntax, uh, the color coding. So if we say, then C++ will write code like this behind the scenes. Let me cut it from here and paste it over here. So then it adds that code because in main it's like oh i need i need something to make this work so then behind the scenes c++ will add this code for us so this is which one nine six okay and again this is because developers know that the fewer lines of code we write ourselves and the fewer opportunities we have for mistakes. So notice this code works. And we can also say uh, double. And then we can add some doubles. And if we highlight this code, notice that C++ knows that now we are working with doubles with the add function. And we can say uh, to display this. And we execute this code. And it also works. So meaning behind the scenes, then C++ would write double at uh, double A comma double B uh, return A plus B. And then when it reaches... Um, this code in in main it scans the functions it's created and it finds it and then our code works and that's how that's the power of this uh, code right here which makes everything happen this templatized function code and uh, that's how cla uh, how free functions work for uh, class functions we have to do the same thing and it's just a lot of tedious changes. So the concept is the same. We will templatize this class, meaning let's add the syntax or the code to make this vector class that we've created work with different data types. And we do that to the header and we also have to do it to um, the CPP, any function that belongs to the class. Okay, so let's get started. This one's kind of tedious, so let me take my time here. So first thing we have to do is here, we have to say uh, that we want to create a template T. So meaning we want to templatize this class. And that's the first step of many steps. And then we have to go and look for any place where we use the class, like here, 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 here. And we have to say, well, this class now supports vector, our class's vector supports any data type. And we have a return value. This class has to support any data type. And this one too. So notice it's just 
syntax changes here. So we just say uh, support any T, which means any data type. And we have to do the same thing here and here. Size is not a, I mean, it's just a number, right? It's a unsigned integer, so we don't have to worry about that one. We don't have to worry about this one because it's not vector type. Or this one, this one. This one, we do have to modify it. We want our vector not to work only with integers. We want it to work with any t of value, right? Any t value variable. So any t data type. We return element of int. No, we return element of t, meaning any data type. And we do the same thing to the next one. And then we come to the private data. Size is okay because it's not the data type that we'll be working with. Size just keeps the track of the size of our vector. And space, uh, we don't need to worry about. It just keeps track of the size plus free slots for our vector. We will not be working only with an array of integers. We will be working with an array of any data type. T. Uh, reserve default and reserve default multiplier. Those are okay. I mean, they have nothing to do with data type. They just help us uh, store these integers, which is one for any time we add memory, we uh, add eight slots. And if there's existing memory and we want to add more, then we do space times two. We, do, we double the memory so that we don't have to be moving, creating memory and moving our vector uh, lots of times. And that's all we do to our header. And notice now it's complaining because it's like, hey, wait a minute, like you told me you'd return a vector. So here we'll say integer because this get vector function, we will say we will create a vector of integer in there and uh, we'll return it. So I come, I'll fix that one first, this one. Uh, no, 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 this one. So we have to match it and match it here. So then though, so now that that function's okay. This code here um, will break if we don't fix it. So we have to say, uh, for now, we'll, we'll do integer. Integer. And integer. So those are the cases where we used a, where we created a vector. Now we have to come into our uh, implementation file and we have to do the same thing. We have any where we have the class in use, <clears throat> we have to templatize it. So here we say, okay, uh, vector of T. Are we creating memory here? No. We are creating these elements here, but we've already uh, designated this one as T, so we should be okay. Uh, we have to also say uh, template class of T. And let me copy this. So once we do that, notice now the errors are gone. And we have to go to the next one. And uh, this is the class. This is the name of the constructor, so that's why we don't have to uh, put the less than t, greater than t here, okay? We are creating memory, but it's already uh, a type t, so we don't have to change it. And we come to the cop copy constructor, and we copy this template class of t, a vector of t, vector of t. We're not creating memory in here, so we don't have to change anything. And so as you can see, it's just mainly making sure that we use the correct syntax. And we use vector there. So notice here, Oh, and I think this one also, because we are using the class here. Okay. Here we are creating a memory. So 
we don't want to create just memory of integer type. We want to create memory of T type by any type. So that one has to be changed. And this one's okay. Okay, 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 okay. So everything else is good. And then we go to the move constructor and a vector of t and we are not creating memory in here so that function is good now we come back in here vector of t vector of t and uh, no memory creation in here nope so that one should be okay we come to reserve and we have to change this one to vector of t we are creating memory of type integer here so we need to change it to memory of t type any data type and resize there was no memory creation here so this one's okay uh, pushback and here also we're not creating memory in, in here so we should be okay we don't want just a value of type integer we want a value of t and that should fix that one and finally we come to the destructor and and that's it so that's gonna what that's gonna help us do well actually we need we need one more change here usually when uh, <clears throat> template classes are created um, everything is written in the header file everything like the fun the <clears throat> the function and the code since we split them up uh, into a header and a CPP file after the destructor here we have to write some code to tell C++ what we want to support as far as far as data types so we'll say template uh, class a vector to support integer types and then to support doubles and we'll start with those two this is only required because we are using both uh, .h and .cpp for the template class. If we had just put all the code in the header, then we wouldn't need to do this, okay? And we, well, let me see if there's any questions here. Okay, yes, yeah, so, so we're okay. Um, maybe we need to try to compile, right? So let's try to compile. Let me see, what are we doing in main? I think we're just calling, so this one's, that code should still work. So we build. Uh, okay, where did I miss something? Let me see here. Oh. Oh, here, in T. Okay, so I missed. Uh, so we can't create a... So let me see. And okay, here, this one is... We can't say like any data type of type T. It has to be any data type of any new data type. So... Uh, one needs to be modified and this one too i can't believe i missed that okay and uh, i think that was it let's see all 
Okay, so build. Oh, new int. Oh, I missed that, and I saw that one, and I skipped it. Okay, what's up here? It's right there looking at me. So it has to be a type T, not a bint. And this one too. I missed those. And I think once we do that, we should be okay. Yep. Okay, so at least uh, I know that uh, there's no more syntax errors in my .h and .cpp. What I want to try now is, well, I mean, does my, does my class work like like my library does like the the vector from the standard library does so we said we'll support integers and uh, v of zero equals five c out v v of one v of one at element zero So we'll start with that one, and we can make the second one a double because we're working with it. So okay, uh, new line, and then we will run this code. So I mean, we have this right because those are for us to see where memory is created, but we have the value five here. So we changed the value at 0 to 5, and we displayed it, and, and we're okay. But more importantly, now we can work with the integer type. So let's see uh, if we can work with double. So double, double. Um, we'll just now try changing the second element. V of four. And we go ahead and execute this one. And uh, so notice now our code is templatized. So, so behind the scenes, uh, so we have a we have our vector of t, and the fact that we wrote this piece of code right here, those two lines that uh, tell the compiler, uh, okay, you can work with ints and doubles. So behind the scenes, uh, C++ created a class to support vector of integer, and then another one to support vector of double. And uh, and that's why this works. So what if uh, uh, let me think here. Uh, we know this one works, so we'll do this here, and then we'll open up this one. And uh, let's create. Oh, to do this. Eliminate that one. Okay. Okay, vector of character type. Uh, 
running terminal. So, so we didn't tell uh, the compiler to know how to, or t that we were going to work with chars. So again, this is because we have header and CPPs, right? If we had everything in the header, we wouldn't have to do this. Uh, build. Um, V1 Okay, uh, let's go ahead and run this Oh, uh, let me see here uh, from uh, uh, uh. Constructor from all oh, the addresses. Okay, well, I would have to go in uh, elements. And let me see, what did I do? Well, that's the memory piece, but at least this works. Let me go look at this because I hadn't noticed that. Okay, this is in the create and init memory at. Okay. Okay, that one should be okay. And um, let me try something else. So let's make sure our memory is good. So I'll say uh, B. and then display both of them. And it's okay. I, I'm wondering why it's not displaying the correct address. I'm going to have to look into that. But uh, notice how one code base now supports different data types, at least three so far, right? Integer, double, and char. Uh, it doesn't have to change to 553. Okay. Yeah, Ben, sorry, I hadn't seen your message. Yeah, so. So everything looks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Where else can can this be used? So, and in development, right, we always try to make sure that we don't. Uh, duplicate code so I've seen it used in uh, in applications to uh, in a concept known as object uh, relational model APIs right or better known as ORMs So if we have a base class, an abstract class, um, I'll just name it object. And then this one has uh, like a query function, add function, update function, delete function and since it's abstract we can write code remember an abstract class has virtual functions but we can write code in here that uh, other classes can share so if uh, maybe this is like a customer a customer class and then this one employee and this one product and uh, they derive from this one 
then by default we know that all of them have uh, I'm just gonna do one okay cuz I want to write everything again they have access to all the functions right so but the code is in here for query add update and delete and then down here would be that uh, programming uh, API ORM so this class uh, would talk to that uh, API and this knows how to get query add update delete and convert to SQL statements uh, if you are familiar with databases that's uh, stands for structured query language and that's how we can um, query databases send data to databases update uh, items in a table delete items from a table add items to a table and then this one would communicate uh, with the database and the communication is um, bilateral right so so this would be some uh, database so so that's where I've seen it used a lot where they create an abstract class and then they have uh, classes that they use for the application and then that's how they send in data to the database and retrieve data from a database what we did was uh, a single class we didn't um, inherit from vector it's just one class but as you can see like with the concepts you've learned so far in this class the models can get complicated but more importantly they can help you solve uh, complicated uh, problems and uh, you can uh, do a search for uh, ORM APIs or ORM in Google and then you'll more or less see what I'm talking about here. So, Any questions so far? Yeah, they're dashes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The their dashes here and they connect. All of them uh derive from the abstract class object. Yeah. And all the yeah, all the code all the code is written here, but we derive to be able to work with different types of objects. So the query here uh we don't write any code. Uh, but by default we know that, that it's accessible. To derive classes so we could say like product query find product id whatever and then this query uh, knows how to write code um, and send it to the orm object and then it converts those statements to sql statements and then it would get that record from the database and then send it back and it would construct a product object for us so that we can display the product to the front end or to a, a web front end or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to see any type of questions like this, okay, on the on the exam. But I'm, I, I'm sometimes students ask me like, well, what else um, are they used for, right? So this is the concept you learned in this class. That's that's what they can help you do. Mm -hmm. well, API is application programming interface but what type of API is it? is it right it could be like the Windows API meaning there's functions or code in there that help you talk to Windows uh, programming interface in this case or API means there's code in here that helps us talk to the database Yeah, there's like graphics API too, where <clears throat> programmers have done a lot of hard work where you just call graphics classes and you can display like a window to screen and what have you. Oh, so next week what I'll do is I'm going to post the code to at the front end. <clears throat> That's optional. Like if you don't want to bother with it, you don't have to, but I'm going to post the code with instructions for those students who want to add, uh, the Windows uh, front end to the Tic Tac Toe application.
and you can you can connect your uh, your code to uh, <clears throat> Windows front end and then play tic tac toe on Windows here on there on your computer. So okay, so go ahead. No, that that code works for Mac also. We would we would have to. Uh, it work like that. Uh, programming inter the widgets X widgets it's X W uh, X widgets uh, W X widgets. I think it is that one works for Linux, Windows, and Mac. So, yep. So, any other questions? Okay, so that is a simple implementation of a vector class. That's as far as we take it. It's just to uh, show students uh, memory management concepts in classes and then uh, kind of give you an idea how they, they uh, support one class working with different data types by making the class a template class. And uh, I'll uh, check this code in tonight okay so now we go to <clears throat> so we had worked with arrays with integers and integers work for I mean that those examples work for other data types that are numerical like doubles or floats but uh, we need to talk about character arrays so arrays on the stack for uh, stack arrays. So oh, character example A. So we create a function use character array and mostly it works like the arrays for integers or doubles. So we create a constant and uh, <clears throat> we create a character and then we say uh, name And we can say uh, equals John. Oops, the other way. And I need to include my stream here. And I can come in here, include. Array char. Okay. And then I write the code for it. Well, actually, I had already done it, right? So let me cut, well, let me cut, copy everything. This is the header. So then we come here and then we can go ahead and write the code here and then I can say uh, using start c out. Okay. And now I can say c out name. And if we uh, put this in a diagram, Nothing surprising. It works like a stack array for integers, but we'll still quickly diagram it. We are not creating a dynamic memory. So this one would hold five. This one points to. Oh, it's not letting me choose a color. Sometimes it does, I don't know why. So,
J O H N and then it will add that character for us and that one is a null N U L uh, terminator so then this is a null terminated string that's how that's how it looks in memory so if we come back here then we can say okay so we are able to display it but let's loop through each character so for integer i equals zero i less than no not i less than name at i not not equal that null terminator increment i um, they also call um, these characters that help us find the end of our array um, sent, sent, sentinel uh, sent, sent, sentinels right they were used a lot back in the day but um, they're not used that much today because most programmers use like the list in python or java c sharp or vectors in c++ which handle all that for us and then we can say uh, c out name at i okay um, let me see 10 okay so i should be able to run that 10 6 okay 10 6 run in terminal uh, nothing's going to happen because i didn't do anything in main right so let me come back here erase char use character array run in terminal so notice our loop j o h n our loop terminated like it it didn't keep on going or didn't give us an error or anything right but that's because we can conclude that if we write code like this then c++ will add this character for us the null terminator it'll add it for us if um, i say like uh, john d like for john doe so now i'm using a one two three four five so I'm using up the five slots. So instead of the null terminator, I have a D here. And then I go ahead and uh, run this code. Um, hey, what did I do here? Okay. Um, okay, so it's saying that our string is too long right so which is good it protects us meaning like there's no space for this guy so then we're like oh okay really okay so let me do this oh so an initializer list right h n d so now I want to write code uh, to uh, well, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, notice now, like it displays the lucky charm, right? So it displays something we, I mean, we we're not expecting because, like, uh, we didn't leave space for this guy right so this was very common back back in the day right so we always had to make sure that we had enough space in our string to make sure that we didn't run into those situations and uh, older compilers would crash our program here like we would have like a overflow buffer overflow meaning we have more characters than what we said we were going to use so then we would get a memory error when somebody would run this program and now like you can see that compilers at least say they try to save us right so i can go back here to five and that's and remove this one and then it adds that 
for me the null uh, terminated string for me so any questions here I don't think you'll run into this code unless you work like for a company that's been in existence for a long time but if you work for a startup shop more than likely they'll use the, the string implementation to work with character arrays right so but this uh, was very common in the 80s and 90s like questions I mean it's really just be mindful of this guy and then be mindful of inconsistent results when working with um, character arrays and again this is a character array on the stack we can also work uh, with arrays character arrays on the heap if we need to let me see here I think I have another example here so before uh, compilers got better we had to make sure that we added uh, an alterminator but now like compilers they try to help us as much as possible and, and they add that for us right so I don't think all of them do I think it depends on the compiler so this is GCC uh, it was the latest version in the summer so it it uh, helps us with issues like this we can also initialize it like this but I'm going to go with uh, size 4 and just for Joe oops uh, Joe 1 and 2 and uh, we can run this one so notice <coughs> it adds a terminator for us which is good because we don't have to worry about adding it ourselves but before we had to explicitly add it and now we so my thing would be if you work with this which you probably won't then make sure you explicitly add the null terminator because just because it works on one compiler does not mean that it'll work on, on another c++ compiler okay so really nothing different than working with numerical uh, integer arrays or double arrays right just be mindful of that guy and that that's about it okay we can also create uh, dynamic memory for <clears throat> an array so uh, use uh, dynamic <clears throat> memory character <clears throat> array and it will work more or less the same <clears throat> like the integer we have to use the keyword new we have to create memory uh, use memory and then something else <clears throat> so cons integer size equal five maybe ten and then we say okay and let's create a pointer to character a name equals a new character of length size so that one creates our dynamic memory Okay, so um, so we'll have the number ten here. This one points here. 
but we are creating dynamic memory so that data now resides on this side. Uh, so, oh, 10 slots. Uh, let me go with something simpler. <laughs> three, three slots. So say uh, it starts here. So this would be uh, Y50 and then say uh, we well, actually, right now, we don't know what's in memory, right? Because we just have those. But if we set name to to something, then we would write whatever memory is there. So let's go back to the example. And usually, when we write code like that, then we want to do some kind of capture from the keyboard. And uh, we can say uh, c in dot uh, get line into name, and we have the size, right? So let's capture at least that many characters. And then we can say uh, c out name, and then uh, one more thing. Uh, uh, No, no, there's no assignment. So, so what are we missing here in this example? In the use uh, dynamic character array function. So anytime we use new, that means we are creating memory. And then we use memory. And then what? Yeah, who's that? Tyler? Yeah. Yeah, Tyler. Yeah, so send me an email that you answered that. So just say uh, final exam bonus. So yeah, we have to, I mean, anytime we create dynamic memory, we have to delete it. Like, we have to. Like, otherwise we'll be leaking memory so that's very important like we have to delete it so create memory use the memory and delete the memory and we always want to shoot yes no no because when we say because then like when when does it delete it like it doesn't know, right? So once we do something like this, then we are telling the compiler, like, I am responsible for this memory. And the compiler is like, okay, good luck. So the, No, because when when is it gonna delete it? Like when when like there's too many ver there's too many variables. Oh, after compile time, but how does it know when we don't need it at runtime? It doesn't know. Like it doesn't know if we need it in this function or in another function or other function other function. It, it doesn't know. So so that's why it leaves it up to us. The only way it knows is if we use unique pointers, because then it, it's encapsulated in a class. And once that class goes out of scope, then it's like, OK, that memory is not needed anymore. Once this function goes out of scope without delete, then it's a memory leak. Mm -hmm. The destructor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the difference there is this is a fun. It's a free function. So, if, if we come here, uh, use. So, once this function starts executing, 
comes in here, memory is created, uh, we do this, we do this, we do that, and then uh, it deletes, okay? But if we forget to put delete, then the function exits and then that memory is still running, meaning like we have to remember to use delete. That's also the case for our, uh, where is that number nine, for this vector. It's also the case we have to remember to use delete here in the destructor. We have to remember to do this. If we have a destructor and we don't delete, then obviously we're leaking memory. Right? So, but the good thing about putting it in here is that anytime the class is used anywhere in our program, like this, you see, and then this function starts executing, it comes here, vector, uh, created, calls the constructor, meaning we create new memory and we use it, and then notice we don't have to call delete in anywhere here. It starts exiting, that class is removed from the stack, and that memory is deleted for us because this executes and it's gone from memory. If we use it like this, notice <clears throat> we have to remember to call delete, even though there's already a delete here. So in essence, we kind of like <clears throat> doing unnecessary work. Like we're, we're giving ourselves more opportunities to create a memory leak. And if we go back to this function, what's the workaround for this? So that we don't have to create do delete. There's a special class in C++ that we've used throughout the semester. For, for, char for characters, anyone? <clears throat> we used it, <clears throat> the string class. The string class <clears throat> will create memory behind the scenes, put it on the heap, and we just have to use it. And once the string's <clears throat> out of scope, meaning not used in that function anymore, then that dynamic memory is going to be deleted behind the scenes. And then we don't have to worry about code like this. This is just so that you all can at least be exposed to character arrays. Right? So if, if you're thinking of the vector class and how the string class might work, then we're like, oh, so probably the vector class, the string class, has something like this in the class where when we create a string, it creates a new array of characters. And then when we assign uh, characters, it uses that array. And if we <coughs> want to add more uh, memory to the string, then it probably does something like the vector did. It has to reallocate memory and then copy the characters to the new memory. And, and that's what it's doing, right? So. If you understood the vector class, then you more or less would understand how they created the string class. But instead of using an array of uh, integers or an array of uh, T data, they use an array of characters. And they use the same thing. Like in the constructor, they create the character array. In the string destructor, they uh, delete the array. And that way we can just use the string and not worry about memory. That's what you did in Python. Like, even though Python, you don't have to specify the data type, behind the scenes, it's creating the data type for you. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The unique pointer works like the string, right? So, so uh, if we create, so I guess you can say that the string is sort of works like a unique pointer, and the vector too. 
they, they manage the memory for us. So if we create a unique pointer here and we use it and then this function exits, we don't have to call delete. The unique pointer is going to be removed from memory because the function's not in this, not in memory anymore. It stops executing and then C++ is like, oh, okay, let me uh, recollect this memory and it frees it. So <clears throat> sometimes uh, when uh, memory is very limited, experienced developers resort to this type of programming where they're like, okay, I'm just going to take ownership of memory management myself. And then only when they need to create memory, they, they resort to creating dynamic memory. They use it in a short scope, like in a function or a class, and then they delete it, right? So, but mostly nowadays, a recommendation is use a string, uh, unique pointers or vectors. You know, that way you don't have to worry about memory management. Okay, uh, let me see what 